Rob Christensen Radio Network Satellite Studio. It's Jim and Rob over Analyze the Movies. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this special morning edition of Jim and Rob over Analyze Movies, the live video podcast that likes to go above and beyond the uh, the review to talk about the craft, the story, and the meaning of the films we watch today. Uh, you'll see that I've got my stereotypical Tim Hortons. Uh, it's tea. You'll note my voice is a little hoarse, but will it shut me up to the lament of my, uh, my co-host and my extra special guests? Probably not. Anyway, folks, we've got a great show for you today. Let me get my nonsense together here. Uh, we're going to be looking at finally a couple of false starts, but finally we're going to be looking at uh, the conclusion to Shiva Bahubali's epic uh, epic tale, Bahubali Bahubali Two, Two, the conclusion. Uh, and with that out of the way, let me welcome my co-host with the most. Mr. Jim Chlaboyko, how you doing, my friend? I'm affecting a, a Bahubali pose. <laughs> yes, my friend. Where is Katapa? Sorry. Let me see the long flowing mane of glorious hair. I did try to bring the uh, blow dryer up, but it, it would blow the the, uh, the fuse thing, I think. The I wisps. Just... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the wisps. Even, in, even indoors, he just brings the wind with him. <laughs> and... So many other things. Yeah. Promise is, yeah. <laughs> is there only, there is only one promise. There is. He's like the Beyonce of the subcontinent, I think. I don't know. <laughs> that is uh, something we're going to have to ask our special guest host uh, about just that pose. Cause he's not the only one who does it. That's like a, that's, that seems to be a pose affectation. Mm -hmm. Um, within, and we'll have to ask, uh, have to ask our special guest who people should know cause they can read the title, but I'm still teasing it out. All right. Uh, before we get into that, Jim, I think it is, uh, apropos that we give everyone, mm -hmm. give everyone a bit, of, a bit of an update on the, uh, potential strike situation for, uh, the international alliance of theatrical stage employees. Uh, down in the United States. Uh, apparently, here, let's give the whole screen to them. 
and we'll get this nonsense out of the way for a second. Uh, apparently the, yeah, they are, they really are moving forward folks. Uh, we've got the potential of a, uh, significant boy, oh boy, <laughs> I really could use a producer. Uh, we do have the potential for a, uh, uh, for a, uh, strike an IA strike in the United States. I think it's important to note for our Canadian viewers, our uh, viewers outside the United States, uh, that this is, uh, while it will affect the majority of television, uh, even the majority of big film, uh, it doesn't affect all production globally. Only those, uh, it is a uh, very the IA locals affected, uh, and it's all the, uh, and they negotiate with the American motion picture and television producers Alliance. Um, so that's very U S based a lot of, unlike, uh, the writer's guild strike, which did affect production in Canada and in other places, um, a lot of the, like, a, because it's a below the line crew, it will be a very much a United States strike, but it'll have ripple effects. It won't shut down production here is my understanding. But anyway, uh, yeah, Jim, like it looks like, uh, uh, the last report I read, IA was saying, we have not heard from the employer, the, the, the negotiating body for 11 days. We gave them a counter offer. And they've just sat on it. Um, so they're moving forward. What do you, what's, uh, what's your take on the situation now? Uh, well, as long as it doesn't interfere with the filming of Ted Lasso season three, because <laughs> that would be in England. Uh, <laughs> no, you know, I, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of a, a bit of a one, two punch, isn't it? Like with COVID uh, doing all the damage, it's done all the productions, it's halted and they're, they're you know, everyone's, sort of coming out of it uh and things are sort of rebounding but uh and, and i'm not talking about this like it's a like a, a minor thing or an inconvenience but uh it, it's just there is no good time i guess right you, you negotiate when mm -hmm. you negotiate so it, it's uh i think it behooves the powers that be to 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 you know of course bargain with bargain with the union i should mention last night i'm um as many know i'm a i'm a, a big saturday night live fan and uh at, during the, the the thank yous and the goodbyes uh you know at 12 o'clock when the show was ending last night uh ad bryant ha had an IATSE shirt on and she sort of made a big deal of it and sort of pointed at it and that sort of thing. So that was one little, you know, one little sort of anecdotal barometer. But um, I saw yeah, that on no, Twitter. It's, uh, it, it's, it's going to be interesting to see where this leads. So, oh, did you? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 They often, um, they, they, it, there's a little codified thing. Sometimes, uh, you know, Don Cheadle wore a I stand with trans uh, people last year, you know, t-shirt at the good, good nights. And mm -hmm. people sort of go over these things with a fine tooth comb. But and, um yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I mean, people still talk about the writer strike all those years ago. So, uh, mm -hmm. who knows how long this is gonna go on? Yeah, well, it uh, yeah it and it is interesting that I the writer strike the um, this the, like I mean, there's a big mush of things going on here. Um, I did, mm -hmm. and I even queued it up, apparently, uh, Scarlett okay. Johansson, bring that story up here. Yeah, we can get that out of the way. Uh, if you look at Scarlett Johansson's, uh, uh, the story there, uh, they did settle it, but at the same time, the current corporate, uh, the current representative of capital running Disney show had, uh, said, how did he put it? It's like, yeah, we need to, in this new world, we need to recalibrate our contracts, i.e. they owed her a bunch of money. They tried to rip her off. And then it was very much like, uh, well, you know, apparently we got to, uh, do a different deal. Because Disney needs more money, Jim. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, this is an industry where Forrest Gump still hasn't made anything, apparently, depending on what set of books you look at. Nor has Coming to America, the first one. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. which is why you know, it never got a sequel. People still don't talk about it. I'm sure you're scratching your head. What is this coming to America? Jeez. Eddie who? <laughs> that little indie filmmaker. <laughs> some, some artiste, him and John Cassavetes. <laughs> Too bad he doesn't um, have any clout. <laughs> Another story occurred to me, and it, it, it is, it's all bundled together. So maybe Hollywood Reporter has it on its front page. And I, cause I, I heard some hot takes on the, uh, said, Ooh, look at this unsustainable and unhealthy, um, pressure mounts on studios amid a looming strike. Uh, but it doesn't, doesn't look like it's on their front page. Maybe on variety. What I'm referring to is uh, the estate of, and I can't remember the guy's name, but the estate of a. Hmm. I cannot find it. Oh, there. Uh, nope. I do not wish to be notified ever. <laughs> oh, uh, nope. Who does? You know what? I'm going to have to just take that off the screen. And riff with you directly, the estate sure. of a uh, comic book artist, yeah, okay. or no, no, it was the state of a writer for, I believe it was the Freddy character, um, Halloween, no, so that'd be Nightmare no. on Elm Street, it's Freddy, the Fre whatever. Freddy, the, oh, no, no, Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> yeah, but the other character from Halloween, the hockey mask guy. Anyway, oh, he yeah, won a lawsuit saying that they still owe him. Like he gets his copyright, uh, the estate got his copyright back. Mm -hmm. And this is all bundled to, and I, I mean, this is, this is relevant to the IA situation um, and relevant to Scarlett Johansson, et cetera. What I think I got some hot takes on the, well, they, they bought the work. Estate should just F off. They got paid way back when. And, uh, another one, John Campia, his argument, uh, was, listen, uh, it'd be one thing if they had to give the money back that they originally paid, if the work, if the movie didn't make it, but they didn't take the risk. Uh, Rob Burnett, he's going on about, you know, who built the plant? You know, I, this is why I'm not a communist, uh, John, who built the plant, who builds the factory? And I'm like, cause I'm listening to this and I'm like, well, the workers built the plant. <laughs> the, mm. That business owner wasn't out there. <laughs> All yes. right, bring in the drill. <laughs> I'm going to go mix concrete. <laughs> no. Um, I think what's important for folks to understand, especially when they hear about bonuses, residuals, and this goes right down to the IA workers, their pension, their health plan is in part paid by residuals that they have negotiated. And part of the thing is, is that no Hollywood talent is ever paid what they're worth up front. Everyone's taking a risk that the movie isn't going to make it. And so part of how they're compensated is it's like, okay, we're not going to pay you probably what we should pay you for this book, this whatever, this, the, this creative work. We'll all be in on a deal here. You charge us less up front. And if it really makes, we'll all make together, you know? Um, and so a lot of these hot takes are, well, you got paid because we've all been so well trained to think I, I work for my wage and I go home. And nothing, you know, it's interesting, uh, you talk, it's probably one of the few it, it's, it's, I think in some ways film is right out of the 19th century, both in the good and the bad in the way it deals with workers. And you may, this may ring kind of true to you as a, an independent, uh, a freelancer writer, but there is also, it's probably one of the few areas where people are still there, there's probably the lowest alienation from their work. The writer is connected deeply and intimately forever 
to that work. Um, and it's recognized in law, like even in the United States now, they sided with the writer. Uh, you know, actors, even the crew, like I, I remember in film, I can still, I don't refer to, oh, I worked four years at Film Co. Inc. I refer to the movies I worked on, even though I was such a small cog. You know, you feel some real connection to the fruit of your labor. And so I think people have got to keep that in mind when they, you know, hear, you know, the extremes, the tales, the extreme cases, you know, the outliers and that. It's like, no, these are people who worked hard, helped create something that will draw, that will draw joy from and big business will squeeze for every nickel for as long as they humanly can or beyond humanly can, you know, when yeah. is, is Mickey Mouse ever going to be, uh, let out a copyright? <laughs> Not if Disney has anything to say about it. So okay. anyway, that's, I, you know, what do you think about what I, I just dumped a whole bunch of stuff on you. What do you, what, <laughs> what do you think? Are you just, oh, is communist corner over Robert? <laughs> no, you know, I, I just, you know, I, it's funny cause it's one of those industries that seems to thrive on how brutal it is to brutals may be strong, but how taxing it is. No, I don't mean literally taxing, but um, you go there, you have 16 hour days. Typically you work a bunch in a fairly short period of time. And then you don't work depending on the calendar, depending on the productions, you don't work for a while and then you get back into it. Months, and maybe you work 16 hour days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and we, we've all, if you read anything about the entertainment industry, you know how brutal it is. You know, everyone wants a hit TV show and then they get it and then they want to get out. <laughs> you know, so, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, they want the stars and things like that. Um, so it's notorious. I remember the first movie hard. I worked on Jim, like the first yeah. union show I worked on, I worked 32 days straight. Mm. You know? And it's notoriously hard on cast and crew. And, and so, uh, you know, in the tales coming out, I think I heard one person comment on Twitter, like, can we at least give them meal breaks? <laughs> that kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's in a way you kind of They get one in for... their 12 hour day, Jim. What are you... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> Well, and after that, get, maybe another. Then you hear maybe. The, the talent. If they can't figure out how to screw them out of it. <laughs> then you hear the talent talk about it, and it's like, oh, making movies is so boring. You just sit around in your trailer and, you know, <laughs> wait for your line. And, and the sort of the flip side is these people that sort of toil away. So, you know, pay them what they're worth. Treat them well. You know, it all goes around. And, pay it forward. And how the heck can all these other industries? Hmm. Sorry. So many other industries that we depend on, perhaps for our lives, they can somehow manage with an eight hour day and a five day work week. Yeah. yeah. Bit of overtime here and there during busy seasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, why? Well, not, not healthcare. <laughs> why really, but... is the only way to make a movie 12 hours, six day weeks, sometimes? Like, yeah, that's. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. like for folks who don't know, important to understand when you hear a 12 hour a day, that may be what's on the call sheet, crew call 6 a.m., let's say. But then you will see departments like on the back side of a call sheet. And the call sheet is basically what's going to happen that day, what scenes are shot, who needs to be there, where the set is, that kind of stuff. Um, on the back of it, there'll be the crew list broken down by department. And you'll see a whole bunch of different call times, you know, and when they really have to be there. And you'll find a lot of the crew, if it's 6 a.m., well, ADs are there before that because, you know, uh, craft service or locations, always there before, always there. Oh, excuse me. My apologies. Always there before, always there later. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, anyway, I, I, I guess I've <laughs> said my, said my piece on this subject, uh, before uh, anything, dad, before we get to our, uh, get to the actual show. <laughs> no, just, 
you know, who knows how this is going to turn out, but it seems pretty like if it if it they do go through and say it's it does last a month or two. I think you know people realize how much they've been relying on television and that sort of thing, movies and television and the visual arts, uh, visual moving arts, I guess, during COVID. So when when you know there's no fresh stuff for a while, I think uh, people are really going to notice. Especially after this long a drought, like in in some ways, yeah. I, I suspect mm-hmm. I I don't want to tease too much for next week's show, but I might have went and saw a movie yesterday afternoon in advance of next week's show, and yeah. I, you know, like I mean, uh, I enjoyed it. Would have enjoyed it as much if. It was like three years ago when it's like, wow, I have dozens of choices. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. This isn't yeah. as good as the last one I saw two nights ago or whatever. And also, if American productions are shut down, this sort of uh, like during COVID, you saw a lot of Canadian television shows go on to the CW or go on to see the big three. So yeah. it might be... Now, in that sense, I'm not sure if that would entail Canadian productions, but anyways, it's a chance for like Australian and New Zealand and Wellington Paranormal and European and UK and all these kinds of things That's to true. come up. Obviously, with Squid Game, people don't mind reading uh, subtitles anymore. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a <laughs> chance for for you know other things, to other countries to show their what they got. Yeah. Um... And we are going to talk about subtitles, and it just dawned on me, should have invited my uh, voiceover uh, buddy and uh, quasi-coach, funny guy Timmy. Um, but we'll have oh, him yeah, on yeah. on a show sometime soon. Uh, okay, Jim. Uh, yeah, let's 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 get the let's get this uh, let's get this movie going. We are going to be talking about Bahubali Two. Um, we do have a ringer. We have our man, mm-hmm. our man in Chennai, <laughs> Mr. Shashank Vachari. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, I'm doing great. How about you? How about both of you? Other than, uh, being horse, I've, uh, for those <laughs> of you, uh, you know, I, I've gotten into voiceover myself and, uh, yeah. I might've been pushing it in the last week or so uh with actually with a client who's in karachi pakistan oh (laughs) so our hour differences is always kind of entertaining all right yeah Uh, Yeah. shashank tell tell us yeah give us uh what's what's the latest man what have you been up to of late Uh, seen any good movies are the theaters open in india yeah, they, they've opened uh, last month. And like after a period of one and a half years, I just saw my first movie in the theater. I saw No Time to Die uh, today. It was a great time. I mean, I mean, uh, if it was not COVID and if I hadn't seen so many, if I hadn't seen such less movies, I don't know whether I would have enjoyed this movie as much. But I think, you know, one and a half years watching this movie in IMAX, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I am a Bond fan. I have not seen all the movies. But I think this is a pretty uh, fitting end to the Daniel Craig era. And Daniel Craig is my favorite Bond. So I was pretty satisfied with this film. Super cool, man. Jim, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, what, uh, what folks... Uh, I would, you know what, and I'll put a card somewhere. We did talk about Daniel Craig and Bond and perhaps his most recent hot take. Um, actually, all about his most recent hot take on who should be the next Bond. Or let's say, what should be the next Bond? <laughs> Which gender? <laughs> um, mm-hmm. That said, what do you think? Worth uh, worth it for us to see in the theater? Uh, you know, go ahead. I mean, even if you guys are not Bond fans, I think that this movie deserves a watch in the theater. I definitely think it does. It's it's going. I'm pretty sure that this is going to go down in history as probably the most divisive Bond film. There are going to be people mm-hmm. who love it. Wow. There are going to be people who hate it, and it's just not going to be in between. It's either going to be you hate it or you love it. There's going to be no midsection spree with this. Uh, and I think your enjoyment 
to no time to die will boil down to how you reacted to the ending i'm not spoiling anything but i think if you're a die hard fan of james bond you may be disappointed by the ending but for me it just suited the tone of the film even though i'm a fan of bond i still like the ending but i think many bo- loyal bond fans would be disappointed by the ending and i'm not spoiling more <laughs> what's your take jim worth it to see it in the theater yeah you know i'll probably the, the theater the offerings that the theaters have they still don't seem to be you know at pre covid levels and so you know and 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 the, the tricky thing is right now and it's it was october 2nd in in well it's obviously october 2nd and in winnipeg i was wearing shorts so the the weather is really great right now uh, i i you know i reluctantly come inside occasionally but uh, i think when the weather gets a little bit worse cuz we don't have when does no time to die come out here in Canada? It's I not for a couple say weeks. It's maybe it? next week. Yeah, okay. I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure. I might wait till I know the, Venom. Let there be car. Venom two is out. Yeah, uh, yeah. one sec here. But I, I, um, I, I think I'll probably wait for the the lousy fall weather to kick in before I start doing that again. I've seen a couple of the- movies in the theater now. Uh, Green Knight and uh, Shang Chi, and uh, yeah, it was it was great to get back. You know, just to to immerse yourself in something, and, and and not sort of stop it to get a drink or you know bathroom break. You know, just you sit there, <laughs> you know, you're powering through it, and uh, it, it's you, it allows you that that submersion, right? And and uh, mm-hmm. so so that's sort of uh, where I've come to more appreciate the theater. But yeah, I'll, I'll see it uh, eventually. Uh, I'm sort of eager to see what they do with it. So. Yeah. How about you, Rob? Yeah. Um, I'm, I think it might be, and I can, uh, for our Canadian, uh, Canadian viewers, it will be out on the, the Wednesday, you know, opening Thursday. So you can see it le- at night on Wednesday. Cause you know, yeah, <laughs> nothing makes sense. Um, no. <laughs> not with film. Uh, I, I think I'll see it much like I saw the last Star Wars film. Maybe you and I will be like, it'll be, ah, it's playing. You want to see a flick just because you want to see a flick. Yeah. And it's there and nothing else is, t- piques your fancy. You're already seen it yet. If I see it in the theaters, that's the way I'll see it in the theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do, uh, you know what, I'll... Now I got Shashank's suggestion rattling around in my brain. Uh, but yeah, if you would ask me last night, I'd be like, I could do it in video unless someone invited me out to watch it. You mm-hmm. know, I could see it on the, I, I appreciate Jim, you're in a larger household, but me single live alone. I could easily turn off most of the lights set the phone aside and just watch the movie on my big ass television. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, uh, but you, it is interesting, Jim, until we started this experiment and you have mentioned it before, especially of late, it is so important. And one of the great things about theater and it was, I, I, I felt it yesterday was that, yeah, you sit down and you shut up. There isn't even a place to, you can't be distracted in a theater. It's, mm-hmm. that's where the, uh, you know, over there is, is not like a place where you can put your phone tilted up at you. Yeah. You know, you're, everything is about, okay, you're going to put your eyeballs there and they're going to, if the film is any good, they stay there. You know? Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, movies are meant to be watched on the big screen. I, I really don't think that, um, you know, any of the streaming platforms can substitute the experience of watching it on a large screen in a captive atmosphere. Mm-hmm. But I, I do think that, uh, you know, we would get to see more big event films in theaters uh, post, you know, once the pandemic uh, subsides and things are returning to normal. I think we would get to see only more big ticket films or tentpole films releasing in the theaters. I think mm-hmm. the smaller films would be more towards the streaming platforms. I, I don't see them releasing in theaters the way they did, the way they did before COVID. Yeah. yeah. Well, look it's still at, going to be a very big experience. Uh, but, you, but at the same time, I think there's a real positive there. You go to the theater for that big, that big cinematic experience. Um, a coda, 
I don't think would have ever, not in our current, not uh, let's say there wasn't a pandemic, that would have had the most desultory time in the theater and, uh, and, and then would have been on a streaming service anyway. Um, mm-hmm. Beautiful little film. Let it be where it can be. Where you get where it where automatically more people can see it, you know, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Or instead of trying to convince someone to take a risk on what you know, when you're pitched it, when you think of that one liner, that log line, you're kind of going, Well, I don't know if I want to get a babysitter, or just you know, like a that's a tough movie to sell for a night out. Mm-hmm. Perhaps the theater version, where everyone's bought season tickets anyway, different experience, right? You know, but you know. what kind of uh, theater was it? A big theater you saw saw it in, Shushank? Yeah, yeah, it was. I saw it in an IMAX screen. Oh, that's right. So, you were saying uh, what? Yeah. And, and what was the crowd like? Was it was it packed? Yeah, Are they allowed it was, to uh, sell it out, or, the, or is it? It was of- the second day since it released, and uh, we have fifty percent occupancy. It was fully occupied, like. For fifty percent, it was completely occupied. Oh, I see. Okay, so you have a little moat of so seats the, around you or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They do the same mm-hmm. thing, or they attempt the same thing here. But uh, uh, I don't yeah. think they're doing it anymore. Oh, they no? weren't okay. doing it. At, they don't have to. They just have to make sure you're vaccinated. Although you people, you could kind of see, people are still habits, right? Mm. Exactly. I was really yep. kind of surprised where it's like, wow. We don't have to have every second row blank anymore. I'm uh, there's no one around me here. I'm sitting here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Why don't we? Why don't we get into the film? Let's. Um, uh, and first, well, first let me <laughs> let me tell let me tell everyone about the film. Let me uh, let me kick you guys off here for a second. All right, uh, folks, we are looking at Bahubali. Pull up the uh, the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Mute my comrades for a moment. Uh, all right, where are we here? Okay, Bahubali 2, the conclusion. Uh, the From IMDb, here's the long line. When Shiva, the son of Bahubali, learns about his heritage, he begins to look for answers. Begins to look for answers. Uh, his story is juxtaposo, juxtaposo, juxta, juxtaposed, cut, <laughs> intercut with past events that unfolded in the Mahishmati kingdom. Uh, before, you know, but his dad. Uh, so we've got that. And it really is, I would argue, uh, uh, the story of Bahubali Sr. Uh, and the uh, and upon that realization of who his father was, then Shiva's story to restore. So there's there's a quick take. It was again much like the previous uh, uh, in, uh, the previous movie uh, directed by S. S. Rajamuli, uh, written by him from a story by his father, uh, which I find fascinating from a story that he told him as a child, and of course expounded upon. Uh, K. V. And I'm gonna. Uh, Shashank will correct me uh, when he's when we bring him back. Uh, KV Vijayendra uh, Prasad, of course, it stars the incomparable Prabhas. Uh, also stars Rana Dagabudi, uh, Dagubadi, uh, Tamana Anishka Shetty, Ramya Krishna, Satyaraj, Subaraju, and Nasser. Um, I think that's about it for uh, what's going on there. Let's talk about. Oh my goodness! Let's get the. Uh, let's get the. <laughs> well, let's first upload the social ingredients checklist. How can you tell it's been a? It's not just horse. I'm. Uh, I'm a little behind here, folks. Um. All right, here is the, oh, wait, I am not behind. This is just the way everything, oh, my goodness. All right, 
<laughs> this is a bit of a disaster. Uh, now I understand why everything's not looking the way it's supposed to. All right, we're gonna still going to do the, even though I don't have the checklist here, we're going to do it anyway. A social nutrition checklist. Would it have ever gotten a reframe stamp back in 2016 when this was made in India, in uh, the Tamil, uh, uh, in Tollywood? Uh, no, it would not have. Um, was it union made? I'm saying no, that doesn't mean I can't be corrected. Uh, unlike American Canadian production where those logos are right at the end, I was unable to, uh, verify if it was union made film. Uh, perhaps Shashank could help us out with that and I can always recorrect later. What about the checklist or what about the Bechtel test? Uh, again, in this film, no. <laughs> if there was any conversation between women, it was usually the mother and a, a wife or a foster mother and others. And it was always <laughs> about uh, Bahubali um, or Shiva. Okay. Um, is there any class consciousness? No, it's, it's a, it's a hero's epic, a, a royal son epic. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> this is not the movie. This is not the movie you're looking for. Uh, all right. With that out of the way, let's get, uh, let's get the guys back. Oops. Yikes. I can't believe I did that. Let's get the, let's get the guys back on. Gents. <laughs> Can you tell it's the, it's the morning and morning. apparently not my best time. Uh, why don't you, let's, let's get a quick review going here. Certainly. Shashank, why don't you, why don't you start us off? What's your, what's your yeah. quick, quick, quick review? Uh, look, uh, I really enjoyed this film. Uh, I think in comparison to part one, I would say I definitely preferred this. You know, it's essentially about answering the question that we left off at part one, which is why Katapa killed Bahubali. But, you know, even though this film is Bahubali to the conclusion, I feel it's more of a prequel rather than a sequel. Uh, the first movie, I would say it's more a traditional good versus evil story. It's like these guys are the villains and these guys are the heroes. But with this movie, what I really liked about part two is that it's a lot more nuanced. Uh, like, except Amrendra Bahubali and Shiva and uh, Rana Dagupati's character, everybody else has flaws uh, and everybody makes mistakes. And it all leads to this incredibly tragic end of Amrendra Bahubali. Uh, so I, the best thing about this movie is that every character has a flaw and they all get blinded and they make mistakes. And that results in this very tragic story. Now, I think it's very lo loud. It's over the top. But having said that, to have so much of pathos in an Indian movie sensibility, I think that's great. So, you know, if I if I would have to describe this to a global audience, I would say this would be this would be Lion King meets the Indian movie sensibility. I think that's how I would describe it. So, I would definitely recommend this film over Part One for a global audience. Having said that, there are like a couple of major flaws I have with this film. You know, like initially we start off the first film with uh, Shiva's story. And to just see it being ended so abruptly, like just half an hour of screen time devoted to his character, about a couple of minutes of screen time devoted to Avantika's character, I, I thought that was terribly handled. And it was just bloodlust at that point. It's like, hey, you know, we need to get a big revenge and it's over and done with. So I definitely didn't like the last half an hour of the film, uh, especially the way they dealt with the characters of Shiva and uh, Avantika. And I also felt, you know, the fight sequences, they were just... I mean, they, they just stretch the, they divide the laws of physics by a big margin, especially the final one. And I mean, I get it that, you know, you are um, people of superhuman strength and it's a mythological story, but I think the fight scene in the last half an hour, it just stretched the bounds of credibility. But, you know, having said that, I mean, these are some flaws I could find, but overall, I definitely love this film. And I would say this is, I prefer this film over part one any day. Uh, I enjoyed it for the most part. So, yeah. I think you're being a little harsh, <laughs> <laughs> Jim. What uh, what was your give us your uh, give us your quick uh, quick review? 
Sure. Well, I, I have uh, I have a few uh, rhetorical questions I wrote down here. I, I said, uh, is Bahu too too much Bahu? Is it possible <laughs> that two is less subtle than one? Is Bala Scar? Is Katapa Dobby? Uh, those are just a few oh. Just a few. Uh, oh, I'm just a slave. I, you know, here's a sock. Oh, thank you, Mr. Potter. Anyway, um, yeah, I, 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 I agree with Shashank here. Actually, there are two wildly different movies. It's not just a continuation of a. Well, I shouldn't say wildly, but they are two different movies. Same sensibility, but I think there's more obstacle in this. Um, the the characters are given more to do. Uh, you know, especially even in the first half hour where the son is playing a bonehead, uh, which is how it, it was translated in the subtitles. Uh, you know, just everyone's given more to do. The first one was almost like a, uh, like a Tales of Hercules, uh, almost like, a, like a, a recitation of all the things that he could do. And if it weren't for the sort of the artful, uh, you know, uh, let's say bigness of the first movie, it might not have been the as presentation, watched. the presentation, like the over the top quality of it and, yep. and the action and the, and the slow motion and the hair and the wind and everything else, you know, that was all when this, when I, I stumbled on a globe and mail article just to reiterate. Uh, and it said, these are, tw these are 21 action movies to watch in 2021. And, and this was listed in the Globe and Mail, which is one of Canada's national newspapers. And so I presented this to Rob and we said, yeah, it sounds wacky. And I, we watched the trailer and it sort of, sort of had that, that you know, over the top Lord of the Rings vibe. Um, but um, yeah, I found the two movies quite different. I did enjoy this one. I did enjoy the first one. I enjoyed this one better. I was more dialed into the story. Like, and I watched this fairly late last night. Uh, but I was, I was in for it. Like I was, I was, uh, huh, uh, huh. You know, like two 30 in the morning. I'm like, yeah, that was, you know, I was wide awake and, uh, we're doing the, well, yeah, no, well, I no, I was on that part. Well, sometimes, you know, you, you, depending on your own energy and your circadian rhythms, you think, Oh, two and a half, two and three quarter hours. Am I going to make it? And no, I was, I was fully present for right up until the end. And, and, um, uh, I, I do agree as well with Shashank is that the, uh, uh, Avantika was sort of, um, I don't even think she had a line or she might've had a couple she lines. Had one oh. line, Shiva, that's all. Yeah. yeah. So they sort of dropped that. <laughs> it, 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 it was, you know, so it's not exactly a continuation of the story, but they seem to be two wildly different movies. I, I preferred this one. Uh, yeah. I just want to also know what are they, what are these shields made out of? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Is it is it is it the stuff you get in Wakanda? I don't know. Anyway, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was it was quite enjoyable. Uh, thanks thanks to that, Jim, and thank you, uh, Shashank. Uh, for myself, um, yeah, I I agree with you guys. Uh, you can see, you in some way they. This is a better movie in, in part because of the success of the first, because then like you can tell they had more time. The everything looked better. It, I, I, you know, it, uh, but also I think they, because they had more money and time, they were able to develop the story more. Uh, I did, when you guys keep talking about two different movies, and yes, one and two are different movies, but like you said, the same sensibility. You're still, you are seeing this epic tale uh, as told through a father and a son. But I also thought this movie was two different stories. It starts, and because of the nature of at least the Indian films, the uh, Bollywood and Tollywood films that Jim and I have seen are extensive experience, Shashank. <laughs> um, but it, it, you're like kind of, you sort of like, oh, okay, we're going to start with a comedy. Pathos, as you uh, refer to it, Shashank, the pathos will come, but it starts as a romantic comedy. And with all the over the topness one expects from this insane from the insanity. And I mean that as a compliment, the bonkers nature of 
Indian film, you know, just that willingness to go all out. Um, I, but yeah, I think that was a great entry into the tale. I also thought I was really, even now, and I wasn't able to rewatch it this week. I saw it when we knew we were going to do this and again, false starts, but I still remember what I really enjoy about the hotel. They do build a character, Bahubali, Shiva, and their effect on others, which they dig into a little more. They do. We do get to know the mother, you know, both the mother of Bahubali, but the mother of Shiva. Antika, yeah, she gets she gets screwed in this film, um, which is really unfortunate. Like, I mean, that it's not like they couldn't have. Are we gonna, Jim? Do you think we would have noticed another ten minutes slapped on here and there? <laughs> it's long <laughs> enough. <laughs> they could have could have given her something to do. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that yeah. said, yeah. By the end of it, I was in it. I was saying in the green room to uh, Jim before uh, before you came on uh, to uh, Shashank, I'm like, I would recommend to anyone, commit an entire evening or an afternoon. You know what? One of those cold afternoons, like they're coming here in Canada, uh, where you're like, you're staying inside all day. You just are. You know, it's minus 30 and then wind chill. You know, yeah. no one's going out. It's Sunday. Commit the afternoon. Close the curtains. Watch both films. Have a real intermission, but just watch them both. Cuddle up. Like, it's just that big. Uh, I, yeah, watch them together. Because you really will go through a, a roller coaster of emotions. Um <laughs> Yeah, it it was a great experience. I, yeah, can't recommend the film enough, even though, yeah, it's like, wow, we have more money. Let's make this stuff, let's make these battle scenes even crazier than the last movie. And I'm like, well, I I don't think you needed to do that. Like, just up the quality, which they did. Uh, But yeah, the physics was not just broken. It was... (laughs) <laughs> it was, it was physics were the, the laws of physics were mugged and then brutal, brutally beaten. They'd taken the yep. money and then they just beat them up and shoved them in a dumpster. Yep. Um, but a, again, I saw it a while ago. That's not the key. I had to be reminded of that. I remember. Yeah. I, well, we'll get more into it later in the craft of the story, but yeah, I, yeah, I think uh, I think we got a round of yeah. Go s- see the effing film. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Would you agree with me, Shashank? See the film. You know, unless you're a, a Hindi speaker or, it, uh, but for a global audience, might as well see the Tamil version with the subtitles instead yeah. of. Uh, you know, like, I mean, I made the mistake the first time around watching the Hindi version, but that, cause then you hear Prabhas's voice. Although I think Prabhas, he did the Hindi dub, didn't he? No, I think it was a, a Marathi actor called Sharad Khilkar. I, I need to verify, mm. but I think it's a Marathi actor. Mm. It's not him. Okay. All right. Um, no. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, uh, there you go. I, well, I don't think it's necessary to... I mean, personally, I think you would enjoy this movie equally if you saw the dubbed version. I think the dubbed version is a pretty solid version. I mean, obviously, you would want to watch it in the original language in which the actors speak. It helps you judge the film better and, you know, get the tone of their voice and um, makes you feel the characters better. But having said that, even if you are with a Hindi uh, copy of the film, I think you should still watch it. In fact, I saw this film a couple of times in the theaters and I think every Indian household who watched this film must have watched it at least two times in the theater. I'm not kidding. Like everybody. Uh, so the first time I saw it, I was in Mumbai with my mom and I actually saw the Hindi version. And, you know, when I went in, I was like, oh my God, is this a dubbed version? It's not going to sound good. But I honestly think it was pretty good. I think it's a great uh, dubbed version. So even if you have the Hindi version and you have nothing else at your disposal, I, I don't think that should stop you from watching the films. I think the voice artist did a pretty great job of dubbing. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not... Unlike... Yeah, I, I still had a great experience with Bahubali 1. Um, it was more, 
on Netflix here in Canada, all of the versions are available. Like you can actually get lost in the choices, yeah. mm-hmm. which is why I screwed up the first time. What the fuck is going on here? Why are there three? I searched this. Am I clicking on the wrong thing? Yeah. It's like choose your own adventure. Is oh, in mine the guy died. Uh, I don't know how that happened. I wasn't even allowed to choose anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. I watched All it right. in Tamil, so I was I was wondering what did so Rob you also I watched it. This one I watched in Tamil. Okay. Um, did I notice a radical difference? No, but you, I think it's still. You had a better chance of, yeah, that actor's original intent. That said, yeah. um, and yeah, well, we, again, I, I don't want to get into good, bad versus bad dub, you know, the subs versus dubs debate now. We'll, we'll have to have you back on Shashank, watch another, uh, maybe not necessarily an Indian film, just have you to watch a film. But um, I wanted to also... Um, bring on a uh, uh, funny guy, Timmy, who's been on our show before. He's actually a, a professional voice actor and who's uh, also done a lot of dubbing. And he, you know, it'd be interesting to have this, have this conversation, have this conversation about the craft, <laughs> you know, in that context. All right, guys, I, uh, with that, um, with this out of the way, I think we're moving into the spoiler zone, eh? Certainly. I just want to say one thing about the spoiler the, zone, the, the subtitles on this one, uh, two no, just on the, the version that was uh, offered on, uh, on Netflix. Uh, occasionally they were too quick cause they'd be in the middle of a song and you'd be reading the verses and then they would cut into some dialogue and it'd be okay, like, Hey, what was that last, now. what was that last line? And then the other, um, the other thing was, uh, they did a really good job of, uh, writing the subtitles. There was, there was some really interesting rhymes that they had uh, in the in the in the songs that I'm sure was the work of of the subtitler. And there was the, this one line where they're trying to amass all the people from all the villages, and all the weapons he said began with the letter S in English. So he get get your swords, your scythes, your spears, yeah. your you know. And I thought, man, that actually that's a sort of going above and beyond. That takes a little bit of extra effort. He wasn't just you know. Um, doing it, you know, verbatim. Uh, there seemed to be some art to the subtitling. So anyway, props so, to them. Because they had all that money, Jim. Yeah, yeah. They had all that money. They're like, we're going to do these subtitles right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wonder, just thinking out loud, as we're talking about, I think this is relevant to the craft, is part of this just the size of the Indian diaspora and how many, I, I'm not saying that it, it, kids born of like first generation and even second generation uh, Indian Canadians, Indo-Canadians aren't learning Tamil and Hindi and, uh, you know, Urdu, you know, in, in the home, but it's going to be, it's going to be the the in uh, the hindi of their parents generation in the 80s or the 90s like yeah when they're seeing these films how many of these kids here in canada jim you know are like no no i i'll, I'll watch it with the english subtitles that is my mother tongue you know like yeah. my folks That's are you know, and yeah, I know it, or I know this weird mashup, like all immigrant communities go through that kind of, uh, you know, the, you know, when Ukrainians are coming here to Canada now and you've got some, you know, fifth generation Canadian, Ukrainian Canadian saying, my Baba said it's like this. And it's like, well, sure. In the forties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and you also have the the, the problem with uh, the language of you know of the immigrants in another country not changing. So if you're that's parents, exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, it's the the Baba, the the Canadian Ukrainian. Yes. Okay. You yeah. know, and and yeah, you know, like because I've got Ukraine um, guy Is I worked it? with uh, uh, years ago, Ukrainian immigrant from like 
12 years ago going, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the forties, people said it that way. Yes. You know, (laughs) know, no Russian says Gosposia, you know, (laughs) like. I, yeah, that's archaic, (laughs) you know, (laughs) the, the language evolves, but, and that's what I mean. Like, so how much of that is them wanting to that, that commitment to fidelity and saying, we're going to spend the money. We know we have a market overseas, a U.S. dollar market, (laughs) and then we're going, we'll get this right because we want to make sure we grab everyone beyond India's borders. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That's true. Okay, guys, let's, uh, let, enough dubs talk. <laughs> what about the actual beyond post-production? <laughs> what, what did you guys think? Uh, Jim, we'll start with you this time. What did you think about the craft of the film? The yeah, you know, it, I mean, big, right? A uh, big movie and 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 big scenes and big sets. It almost reminded me of, uh, you know, things like Cleopatra, you know, Elizabeth Taylor's Cleopatra from the the fifties and, and and that sort of things. Um, there were scenes, and this reminded me of that that crazy black and white. Was it uh, not M? But it was was it Sunrise? One of those big German productions from the twenties that, that you had children in a dark room with water. And I thought, Oh my God, you know, like, so they had, you know, all kinds of things going on. Metropolis was a big, that's right. Yeah. You know, and they actually had scenes and I thought, Oh, you know, two things that you shouldn't probably mix, but anyway, um, super big sets. Uh, I'm not sure if it was computer aided or not. So the thing that one of the things that really popped out was the color, you know, so they had the, the sort of the clay colored background of all these gigantic courtrooms, uh, r- rooms of the court rather. Uh, and, and, you know, everyone's dressed in primary colors and things like that. So visually it was, it was, uh, you know, it just didn't stop. Like it was super, super resting. And I think, you know, the orderliness of some of those gigantic rooms, uh, was contrast when, you know, Bahu, Bahu Bali was sort of cast out. And, you know, they were living near the mines or whatever, and it was all just like an old quarry, right? So I was thinking know, about the of, Ten Commandments. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. And a lot of and, contrast, and, that kind of thing. And very religious. Like, yes, and I don't, yeah. and not pejoratively, but we, we are seeing a mythic uh, a culture of, hero tale, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. It almost reminds me of those, uh, I don't know, Rob, if you were subjected to these in the 70s, those, those you know, little tales of Jesus and, and those little books that they would pass out and, and those little <laughs> novellas and things like that. But um, yeah, no. So, so visually it was very arresting. Uh, I don't know if there was drone work again, or if it was computers, but you know, the scale of everything, uh, even when they were, you know, this smaller kingdom that when they were, they were bringing all the, the jewels to Devasena, uh, yeah. you know, in, in her smaller kingdom, eh, how smaller is this kingdom? Cause it was a big white <laughs> palace and, and it was just sort of like, so that the drone or the camera or the point of view sort of came in and did this big those you know, hill thing around the, the tower. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those are poor cousins, but uh, so, so just scale and sweep and uh, you know, the camera sort of constantly moving uh, just visually very, very arresting and rich, uh, rich. Yeah. Rich, yeah. I, I could have done a little less with the slow mo because there was there was a scene where nobody moved and it was still slow mo like just one shot. I'm like, why is this slow motion? But anyway, um, the uh, yeah. So I mean, color, movement, uh, scale. Those were all very impressive uh, to me. Performances for me, performances that matched. Like I. I I keep thinking about calibration and how there, you know, we, we seem to obsess with, uh, at least here in, I don't know about, um, in India, there is, you know, you got subtler performances, you got big performances. Um, and some folks are like, well, that wasn't big enough. I want to, you know, the chewing of the scenery, which is knocked and, uh, and then others are like, you know, no, I want to see the a masculine driving performance. 
<clears throat> whereas I kind of starting to think about are the performances calibrated to the film? Is yep. the is everything calibrated properly? Do this does the story and the way we're being told it demand scenery chewing? I think the end. So when I look at this film that way, I think of yeah, this is a well a well calibrated film, like a well. <clears throat> The performances, pardon me, folks. <clears throat> the performances are properly calibrated to the film. Of course, yeah. they're big, but it's a big movie. You can't do the, and then I was, you know, this is not mumblecore. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to work in any palace. Heck, in any, in any hut, in any kingdom, in Bahubali. You know, yeah. so yeah, the costumes, the soundtrack, all like everyone knew what they were making here. It's like, <laughs> yeah, big. I need to go bigger just to be seen. You know, yeah. but yeah. no one feels lost either. Not the lowliest peasant coming to Prabhas for his wiz or to to uh, 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 Bahubali's. Uh, you know, stand in the quarry for you know, solve my problem. <laughs> what Absolutely. about you? What what, uh, what about you, Shashank? Or if Jim and I, <laughs> no, like, I, I greedy agree with jerks you covered everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, I would say with sometimes with really big scale films and big productions, you can almost get the sense that it's a bit too much. And it comes across as inauthentic. But with this movie, it didn't come across as inauthentic. Everything felt uh, authentic and it felt very, very real to the story they were telling, as you said. And uh, I think the actors' performances, everything was calibrated perfectly. So I think as far as the sets were concerned, the visuals were concerned, the costumes, everything was a shade better than the previous film, a notch better than the previous film. Especially my favorite visual is when the uh, ship floats over the sky and it's almost like you're dancing in heaven during the song. <laughs> and and the songs also, I would say, were uh, much better. The than swan the ship? Film. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. So I think overall, uh, visually, the color correction in this film, I think it was outstanding. Uh, I think it was one of the best color corrected films I've seen, at least in India. And... Uh, the contrast. I think everything was uh, pretty good, uh, perfect actually, as far as the technical side of it was concerned. The only uh, concern or complaint I would have is I found the fight sequences in the previous film, especially the final one with the Kalikeya tribe, to be much better than the last half an hour when Bahubali is taking on Balal Dev. Uh, you know, I thought there was a lot of shaky cam, and you couldn't clearly see the action in this part in comparison to the first one, where I where I felt the action was very clear and you could see where the characters were placed. But having mm -hmm. said that, apart from that, I would say uh, craft-wise, this film is a definite improvement and yeah, yeah. Pr technically pretty good. Pretty what amazing. Were you, what were you, you were, you were about to say something about the, the music, uh, Shashank. Uh, you said the songs you like better as well? Yeah, I, I like the songs better. Uh, especially yeah. like the opening one when they um, kind of recount the events of the yeah. first film, kind of. Uh, I like the songs more. I listen to this on repeat um, many times actually, especially the yeah. first song. Uh -huh. yeah. It's funny you mentioned the ship because when the ship was, uh, the, there was a shot of the ship when it was about to come into port and it landed back in the water, as ships usually do. And uh, <laughs> they were they were going under that big elephant statue, and they just showed the they showed the the, the, yeah. the bottom of the statue and the mast. And I said to myself, yeah. I, I said, "Oh, please, please let the mast touch it. Please, Freaks. please let the mast." And of course, crack and the the good the, foreshadow. The yes. Yeah steps up he's like yeah and that happened a couple of times uh, there were there there was two characters that were throwing spears at each other at the same time and i thought oh please let the spears hit each other and then of course the <laughs> one yeah. spear cleft to the other in half and uh and uh, it was that kind of that kind of a lot of times they say that anticipate if you can see something coming that sort of adds to it uh and uh yeah it was, if it's I, done well yeah. it's good yeah 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 but, uh, it felt very yeah. authentic it didn't feel like um it didn't feel like they were just playing this up for emotion. I, mm. I, it felt very real to the story that they were telling. This is a mythological yeah. story. And uh, especially to the Indian sensibility, I think it was very authentic and real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, you know, again, I, I, like, I keep coming back to that. It fit the movie. It fit the yeah. story. 
I'm right. not um I'm not ever going, well that seems out of left field oh, or I yeah. uh, boy, they're really going big on this. I don't know. <laughs> to put it, Jim, this kitchen sink drama. <laughs> you know? um, this is unrealistic. Well, I, I'm yeah, thinking another that, great that film we Ray. saw. Yeah, uh, but another great film we saw. Um, the uh, another round. Yeah. Performances, sets, sound, everything calibrated to the story they're telling. You know, I, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's calibration. It's not, oh, that's too big. It's, it's, well, why is it too big? Why? Okay. There's something else wrong. Either everything else should have been bigger or, <laughs> you know, cool. Well, uh, anything else you want to guys want to add to this before we move, before we move into the story? Uh, in terms of the was, multiple I, stories, the yeah. the two, maybe even three movies that was in this movie. I don't, I don't know if we uh, sort of dove deep into the the, the performances uh, as much uh, yet, but uh, um, no, I we have haven't. To, like we've uh, we've yeah. basically said everyone was great, but we haven't yeah. really gotten into it. You're yeah, right, I mean, I, I I don't know if there was. Uh, really a, a weak performance. I could have used a little bit more from Bala. Um, and I sort of wish he was a little more, uh, and that may not be the actor's choice. It may have been how he was directed, but he was, he sort of like, ah, ha, ha, you know, like doing the, the, the traditional bad guy a lot rather than the charming bad guy who's secretly like kind of conspiring against the kingdom. Um, or I, even I, giving us a little more, Little, little bit more sympathy for the devil, maybe, eh, Jim? Yeah, yeah, you know? and that's about that's my one note. I, I like, I did like the roles for the women, and I have to say that you know, at the at the end of the first movie, Deva saying I was, you know, she the locked up woman, sort of. Not that she didn't mean anything to me, but I was just like, you know, who's this woman? Mm, you know, I was sort of, I, I was not especially interested in her. But by the end of this, when you see who she is, and that what she's yeah. gone through. Um, yeah. One of the criticisms I read later. And where and, she started. Yes. Like yeah. How they fell in love. What yeah. she, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go uh, on. It, no, I was just going to say that uh, the one thing that, that was unfortunate, and this is sort of a bit of a story choice as well, but um, I, she, at the end, she was sort of unable to defend herself, and that might have been from years of captivity and stuff. But she was, uh, she was an ass kicker in in the in the uh, in the first hour of the movie, and I sort of wish she was would have been able to move that, you know, have those skills later. I think I think it would have just made her character more interesting. I mean, you're, I think, you're not yeah, really I think so many years in captivity. Realism. I think it would yeah. would have drained her skills. I, yeah. I think that was realistic. Well, it would have been silly to watch her. I mean, I feel it would have yeah. been silly to watch her kick ass when, you know, she's sold and the captivity yeah. has drained all the We would have made her. fun of that. Or if she been, had... Or how if she fit had was she on that chain? <laughs> yeah. in out, living outdoors. It's amazing she survived it all. That was her ass kicking, Jim, that yeah. she yeah. survived. That she survived. I would like she... to have seen one move, like one, uh, you know, because they just show, they show Bala and they show some rope and she's gone. Uh, but, uh, yep. uh, you know, the, the, I think the, the women characters are given a lot to do. And, and, uh, again, Aventika was kind of dropped, but, uh, you know, she was, it was like, oh yeah, there she is again. She was, she was great <laughs> in the first one. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I sort of, I even like Prabhas more in this one. Yeah. Um, I thought, uh, Katapa, uh, Again, maybe a little bit of a story choice. He was crying a little bit too much. I've noticed that in other shows that I've watched lately. Like every scene, he's sort of welling up with tears. But you know, that's that's not a, an actor choice. But uh, uh, I was going to get the beard trimmer out right now uh, this morning, but because uh, I'm looking a little bit like Katapa myself. But anyway, um, the um, yeah, I, 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 aside from sort of needing a little more richer characterization, uh, I didn't find really any. Uh, performance was were off. Uh, how about you guys? I think what the reason. Go, yeah. No, go no, go, go for it. 
Uh, I just have I questions. Saying, yeah. I was saying the reason we probably like the actors' performances in this film more compared to the first one is I feel the characters are a lot more fleshed out. Yeah. They're a lot more richer. And I think most of this film is concentrated on Amrendra Bahubali, right? So I think he's a mm-hmm. much better written character than Shiva. Because you again see moments where he's powerless or he's weak. For the most part, you know, he's still the hero that everybody's rooting against. Uh, everybody's rooting for. But you mm-hmm. still see moments where he... Um, is kind of a tragic hero so i think that makes you root for him more and i think because of the fact that every character uh, like every supporting character whether it be uh, shivgami devi whether it be devsena makes choices that feel very human and relatable i think we like their performances more so i think the reason why we like the actors performances more is because the story choices made them more fleshed out human relatable characters yeah. and i think that's what um, at least for me, uh, made me like the performances more. Well, let's, let's not forget, like a, a lot of these characters, we had a whole other movie to get to know them at least a bit. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like they're the, I mean, it's, it's trouble if it's just a sequel. You know, if the first movie was kind of all cooked in, but because it's part of a, a larger epic tale, we've been introduced to a lot to, we've been introduced enough to some that we can spend a lot of time on others. I, I was wondering though, guys, uh, and this is to, to a question to both of you. So, uh, Devasena, is that Devasena. it? Devasena. Thank you. Um, yeah. her character, not kicking ass. I think is, is right. It's a good, like, and mind you, yeah, we're, we're not talking about performance. We're talking about story guys. Let, let's just let it go. <laughs> let go on. Cause you're, you're talking, you guys are talking about things where it's like, it's got fuck all to do with performance. So yeah. we're moving into story. Antika, if they had Antika in there to kick ass, to be the, like a few minutes of her, doing what she did in the first movie, I think we wouldn't have even talked about uh, Devasena's not kicking ass. Because you could have had her in kicking ass, being part of rescuing Devasena. Yeah. You know, and we would have been fine with it. We're we're missing ass kicking. Uh, We're missing a woman ass kicking at that end, but I don't think it's necessarily uh, has to be Davis Sena. Like again, yeah, she living outdoors, Jim, yeah. with a chain, yeah. <laughs> and barely able to well, pick up sticks I mean, <laughs> to well, build the funeral pyre that you knew was coming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're not really dealing with a lot of realism in this. Uh, in the first place, this is a movie where they're shooting. They're shooting six people with shields over a wall, two hundred <laughs> feet in the air, and they're landing okay. But they're you know, in a ball. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh yeah, I guess that would diffuse all the, the weight and the impact and that mm. sort of thing. I, you know, she doesn't have to. You know, but back to my antique question. Just like one little, would that one have little helped? Stab in the back or something like that. That's sort of a that's a that's a movie thing, right? Where you think the person is down and out, and they. They uh, they find a pen on the ground and they just you know put something yeah. in. But didn't she path. have to walk? Do the walk? The who had to do the walk? Yeah, she, she had to do the walk. Yeah, yeah she, she had, had to do that, that walk. Yeah, yeah, that, was pretty, walk yeah. that was pretty. Yeah, that was pretty badass. Like yeah, that was. I mean, yeah. that was in the end, she had the, the strength. She was able to dig deep. But but again, back to the there's a story problem here. Um. I think it would have been weird to just give her some ass kicking, but if Antica was there, we would have had that. Yeah. Especially yeah. in that final act, you know, in the final battle, we would have went, oh, okay, no, we're getting our, these you know, women it's... have some very active thing to do. And it's just because you have the new generation, right? You got the new queen who can kick ass. Because you yeah. really do have three generations yeah. of women, you know, and their ability to be a statesperson. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. statecraft. Yeah. Wasn't that what grandma... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> little <Yeah>. statecraft? <laughs> yeah. 
you know, it's not just ass kicking for the sake of ass kicking. I felt, you know, yeah. the the character had a lot of potential, Avantika's character at the end of part one. And, you know, just to have her utter one dialogue and a couple of minutes of screen time, I think that's what bugged me more. Not, not the fact. And of course, it would have helped her. Shiva. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Shiva, that's it. So it would have been great if she had more to do in the narrative. And of course, you know, the last half an hour is the battle sequence. So it definitely would have helped if she, you know, got to show her pros because part of they it. set her up as a warrior, right? Uh, yeah. In the first part. So I think that part really bugged me. I mean, it didn't bother me as much, but it, you know, when you come to think of it, I felt they could have done more with that. Something's was, missing. Yeah. It yeah. was very abrupt. The last half an hour. Yeah. That's, that's what I felt. What yeah. did you guys think of this is and it I after a while I got really it, it, the the one character I could have done seeing less was Bala's dad his name but he was a real snidely whiplash you know yeah you know character Vijala where Deva. after a while Vijala Deva. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah. I could have, you know, after a while I'm like, less is more here. I, you know, I, you and know, like, he ultimately didn't get, go ahead. go ahead. No, no, you go. Oh, I just like, what was his, ulti- I was thinking of this just this morning, his ultimate fate. They just sort of, didn't they leave it hanging? Didn't like he get crushed by something? No, no, he doesn't him? get crushed. He lives at the end. Like, yeah, if you see the final it. frame, he's standing next to Shiva, I like, on the left-hand side of the throne. He's, he's that. Oh. He, like, they've just let him be. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, apparently, the director uh, felt he was more, <laughs> more important than I thought he was. Like, you... Like it was a weird character, you know, Bala didn't need the constant prodding. Once Bala had committed, dad could have died. You know, that we had that, you know, his part to play in the, the betrayal of, of Bahubali, the, uh, which I thought was wonderful and excruciating, especially in who's the character he was Earlier in the film, he's a bit of that blowhard, bit of a coward in in uh, yep. Devasena's oh, uh, K- from Kumara. Devasena's Kumara. Kumara, thank Kumara you. Varma. Kumara like, Varma. That was a great. I, 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 I getting goosebumps now. What a great little arc within the film Absolutely. that kind yeah. of yeah you know uh, build like builds the story, raises the stakes shows you how what bastards these people are in the way he's manipulated and dies. Um and anyway, after that part, we didn't need the dad anymore. He has he has uh achieved especially as he achieved his goal, which was get his son on the throne. Yeah. Could have bumped him off then, but to keep him kicking around you know, was I mean, Bala? He had built a golden statue. They, there's the golden calf. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. yeah, so much bigger. Looking down, <laughs> the golden calf, the golden statue. You know, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I think you know, uh, if, uh, I don't know if you heard Rob. Sorry, just saying, just quickly. If you watch the end credits, but there's a couple of voices that are talking over the end credits. It's not a scene, and it's just like. Well, father, okay. grandfather, or what? Whatever happened to the son? That effect, and they're like, "Well, that story hasn't been told yet." So, so I sort of wonder, I did not catch that play. I didn't see that. Yeah, I didn't see that as well. Yeah, I should probably. It, it, it's sort of a little hook. They mentioned it on Wikipedia and so, or if you just want to go back, go back to the and. and I'm probably it, it's it like after the show. Three lines, and it's just it's a uh, an older man. They don't yeah. show anything. All it is is voices, and it's an. Older man yeah. talking to a child. So um, so I sort of wonder what? if he's sort of being kept in place for something in the future. I don't know. Why? Yeah. <laughs> we well, couldn't find know. someone else just to be evil. <laughs> <laughs> Was that some original I... sound from India that we just heard? <laughs> that it, horror? It was awesome. Yeah, it came through. Yeah. Shashank? You guys heard something? 
Yeah, we did. a big yeah. horn. Was that from your side? A car well, horn? You could hear it? Yeah. You could hear it? Yeah. Wow. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> wow. No, it's good. It's value added. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in a real place. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Um, here's uh, back. To, so, so yeah, that was a character that bugged me. But mm -hmm. really, it's a story problem. It's like, okay, yeah, bite halfway. We're done with them. We don't need them anymore. Bala doesn't need them anymore. Whereas Kumara, I still feel bad that he died. Like I feel yeah. it, you know, especially and I. You know, like the, how well it, it it's it, Antica, that character too much, Antica not enough, yeah, plenty for her to do because the story kind of demands it. This is the reason, part of the reason it's a whole is not just because they developed her in the last movie, but we see the mother of Bahubali being who she is, and then Devasena as the wife of Bahubali and the mother of. Shiva, well, you need that, like, it seems to be a big thing in the story that there are these feminine counterparts to these, to, to, to the men mm -hmm. Yes, that are as like, I mean, that hold their own with them, Yeah, notwithstanding the, I uh, will like, <laughs> oh, that's some inappropriate touching and. Yeah. <laughs> Notwithstanding all the HR complaints and perhaps, you know, criminal charges that would be otherwise pressed <laughs> in a mythic context. <laughs> um, and yes, but beyond that, guys, I can't see any, any real problem with the story. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like they, they should have had given Antica more to do in part because the yep. story demanded it. Don't show us the other two and then give her short shrift or go, oh, well, we'll, we'll just be, we'll just remember back to the other movie. You know, we need her now. And yeah, creepy old dad could have died. Yeah. Yeah. Should have died at the end. I, I should have just fucking died. But really? beyond that, what do you, what, what's, is there well, anything wrong with this story? No. Further to the, the, the women's, um, the, 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 the female roles in this um, at no time. I don't think, did you see somebody being chased, fall down and hurt their ankle, which you still see in North American productions still like they'll, they'll trip and not every time, not all the time, sometimes, but well, you're you wearing know, all those heels, right? They, yeah. yeah. <laughs> put uh -oh, put the woman in. in stilettos and then say fight or run. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have a couple of comments, oh, uh, something me. I wanted to touch on, but for, I, I just wanted to give props to one at, one one scene when they're finally, when Devasena finally meets the mother uh, in the big sort of royal court. Uh, and and she sort of stands up to the, the mother and, and says a few things. Even I went kind of mm -hmm. like, whoa, wow. you know, you feel yeah. that, that like, any, if you've ever had like a disastrous Tension. family dinner or anything like that, yeah. yeah, it's it's almost that that Roy Scheider shot in Jaws or that Hitchcock shot where the head Jaws. stays in the foreground, the background recedes, and you're just like, whoa. And even I sort of, I'm sitting by myself on the couch watching the shock this, zoom, and, and yeah, yeah, the shock zoom, and and the, she says, uh, "That is wrong, Queen Mother," and and, and she looks at her, and I and went, "You are oh. being rude to me." <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And she, so she's fully standing up uh, to, to the yeah. to her mother-in-law, and I just thought, oh my god, this is going nowhere good. But that was a that was a, a, a nice, well-handled scene with with sort of ramifications and impact and, and that sort of thing. I, one uh, aspect of it, it's it's a pretty brutal movie in a lot of ways. Uh, when um, I can't remember which version of which Prabhas role it was, I guess it was the brother when he brings the head of yeah. uh, Bala's son, son. Uh, you know, or, or no, mm -hmm. uh, Davis Sane is carrying the head. Yeah. And then yep. and they, they throw it up and shoot an arrow and it lands in the, in, in the King's uh, hands. That's, that's 
kind of in your face and, and, and pretty brutal. And, and likewise, there's a lot of, you know, uh, scene, scenes regarding justice when the, when the, the, uh, I guess the, the Sergeant of arms or whoever that guy was, the guy, the touchy feely guy who, yeah. um, gets his head, has slid. fingers cut, cut off. Yeah. And then he gets his head chopped off. So there's sort of that, that, uh, that interesting notion of, of That's justice. My Not that he didn't movie. deserve it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, yeah it's a pretty hardcore. That guy was wishing it was there. just a complaint to HR. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I'd rather, exactly. much rather have some mediation. <laughs> Perhaps a note in my file. <laughs> Where's my yeah, but reprimand? It, no, but it's quite funny to think that he got his head chopped off when you consider all the things that Shiva did in part one to Avantika's character. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, but it is yeah. also that but that scene is great. That's my favorite scene in yeah. the film. And yeah, apparently, at least one man believed a woman. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Unlike yeah. a movie that's about to come out where he's like. Well, I must fight for my honor. No. Nope. Bahu Bali just basically was like, oh, well, that's what you're saying. That's I buy it. it. Yeah, yeah. Let me get out yeah. my, <laughs> let me get out, let me get the HR department. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I call him Spiky. <laughs> this one's Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord, that's terrible and entertaining at the same time. Yes. What did you guys, uh, was there any particular, like, what, for me, it was the arc, which I think is like kind of an almost a, a, a comic and a tragic counterpoint or, well, no, I, Kumara. That arc. Yeah. Uh, but you saw that in both films, uh, but really emphasized in that arc where these heroes, the, 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 the heroes of the piece very much are how they change people around them if they're willing yeah. to. Because Kamara's a blowhard kind of chicken, know-it-all. And by the end of it, like, even though his, his death and it hits harder, like it hits, it hits here, his death, because he became such a, um, um, a good within the context Warrior. of the film without getting into the, the gender politics, yeah. uh, but a good man, you know, an exempt, a, a, a shining example of manhood because yeah. of Bahubali's yeah, I, 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 I agree yes. with you, but because it's, it's, it's written, cooked into the character in the story that Bahubali, uh, as opposed to Shiva, is that guy who's like, he makes everyone better around him. You know, that's part of the tragedy of his death is that the bad guys even exploit this about him, get Kumara to, you know, cause Kamara shows up. He steps up all of a sudden. He's he becomes this hero, this strong hero that he never would have been. You know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, so that's my favorite part of the story. But what about you guys? Uh, you know, uh, my favorite part is probably that um, when Katapa tells Bahubali, um, and he's saying, "Go ahead, go ahead," and. Um, Prabhas, that is, Bahubali tells Katapa that as long as you're uh, on my side, nobody in this world can kill me or destroy me. And uh, he eventually goes, takes a sword and stabs him, literally backstabs him. So I think it's very, very tragic when you come to think of it. Uh, it's a very mm. tragic story. And I think that part was, when I saw it in the theater, I was like, oh my gosh, that's just too much, you know? Oh, so yeah. I would say that's my favorite part of the story. And the confrontations that uh, Devasena and uh, Shivgami have uh, in the court when she initially comes. Yeah. And of yeah. course, the scene which I mentioned where he gets his head cut off. Yeah, th yeah. These three scenes were probably my favorite, favorite parts of the story. Would you... Go ahead, Jim. Oh, I, was, I was just going to say that, you know, the first part, I, I was sort of worried that, that number two would be a, an extension of number one, just like 
sort of a listing of all his great qualities, but even, and it was almost like a 1940s movie where they're, you know, assuming different, uh, when, when they go touring the area and they're assuming yeah. different identities, nobody knows that he's Bahubali. <clears throat> so, and, and as it was kind of, but that's goofy. also super mythic. Yeah. Like so yes. many or, and, oh, yeah. and, uh, fairy tale folk tale, you yeah, know, the yeah. king to truly understand. Heck, it's Shakespearean. Uh, yeah, Henry V yeah. dons yeah. regular soldiers' clothing to see what people are really thinking uh, on the eve of St. Crispin's Day. Absolutely. An early version of Undercover Boss, perhaps. But uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 it was goofy. And um, <laughs> and Katapa, you know, is, is sort of, overreacting oh a broken arm how can i you know he, he sort of and and these almost feel like it feels like a different era of a movie but anyway it was a it was a sign that they were trying something different f with this movie that they, that they were giving the, the actors something else to do and and i i kind of i saw that part and i thought this is this is actually quite different and, and it seems to be going in another direction and uh you know you, you got to bunch of new characters and all that kind of thing so i, I sort of liked that bit um mm -hmm. uh and uh yeah i just uh and of course the sort of the the, the mother-in-law meeting the daughter-in-law scene is just oh you know <laughs> uh yeah that's uh that's nerve-wracking yeah. for anyone you know, who's had a mother-in-law and you know is married <laughs> to a daughter-in-law or anything like that but anyway you know, if I would have to put it, it, it's probably the stories about the conflict between the principles uh, that you're taught and the laws of the land. And um, how do you coincide the two? Because in many places, uh, a character gives his word, like Shivgami Devi gives her word or Katapa agrees to do something. And even though it's not something which they would want to do, they still have to carry it for the land. So I think, and even she says, um, um, Dev Sena says to Shivgami Devi, like, what sort of a land is it where... Um, People are guilty until proven innocent. So I think it's the conflict between the laws of the land and the principles that you're taught. And uh, which one do you follow? And mm -hmm. in this film, all the characters end up following the laws of the land. And eventually it's a man wrong. It's a man wrong, certainly, but it's also a society wrong. And eventually the story is about trying to restore back that order through revenge and getting setting things right. I Well, okay, I, I agree with you there, Shashank. But I think the whole thing... The whole piece is about restoration. Yeah, exactly. Like There's that is back. the key theme, but restoration, not just of that, those conf conflicting laws. I think they're almost like a, a sub theme um, and, and a classic one where, you know, we, they almost over dial. And I don't mean this film. I mean, so many movies, stories like this, where they use the, whoa, it was caught in this old promise. When in the real world, it'd be like, yeah, but I didn't know that. So yeah, we get to unwind promises because that's dumb, you know? Um, but in these ones, they're like, oh, that is iron. They set it up as ironclad. It's kind of a, a, a bit of a trope, uh, a, a bit of a plot device, uh, but the deeper theme of the film, I think, is about uh, a, a, a restoration. And for to go back to what Jim was talking about, you can't have restoration if you don't know what you're restoring. And that's the thing about the first part of this movie is it's the first time we get to see what it was like before. And what, yep. why, what, like, why should Shiva be the new king? Just because mm -hmm. he was born to Bahubali? We got to find out, you know, why Bahubali was great. What are we restoring? What did the land, what did the community lose when he yep. was betrayed by bastards and not helped at a time by, uh, you know, like uh, going back to his mom, her inability to bend because like it's not so much the law i think it's just her inability to go back on well i can't be seen as going back on my word it's about her ego being That's what kings do it kings and queens do it all the time statecraft i believe they call it and it doesn't even require a sword <laughs> you just say 
Ah, uh, you know what, Bala? I did promise you that, but uh, I was unaware of certain details. <laughs> you know what? So, son, we're going to have to come up with another thing for you. <laughs> no <Yeah>. kingdom, <laughs> no woman that your brother like. Wait, what the? You already knew, and this is just part of your way to screw your brother? God damn it, I'm taking something else I gave you back. <laughs> like, there was... That's what parents do, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think there's a deeper restoration meaning here. And that's the, and it, it, it again, and I think that's why that Kamara subplot, that Kamara arc is so important to me because it's, it's kind of the promise of the whole film that mm -hmm. puts Shiva back because just as this great potential ruler Bahubali is, was Shiva can, because Shiva's now in his rightful place, everyone will be made better. He will do just mm -hmm. what Bahubali did in Devasena's court or in uh, when, when she was a princess in the uh, in that hillbilly shack of a palace of beautiful white and lovely gardens, Shiva will do for uh, it's Mashishmadi, right? That's the yeah, it's the larger kingdom. Yes, there you go. Yeah, uh, that is my opinion. <laughs> I agree. It's it's, it's hoarseness will not stop me from <laughs> pontificating. Sorry, no, go, I go ahead, man. I was saying it's uh, it's not only the story of a man wronged, but it's the story of an entire society or an entire community of people wronged. You know, it's almost like a demigod being framed, being wronged by the people around him. And how do you restore back that to its natural order? How do you get that back to the place yeah. where it rightfully belongs? Well, so being being wronged by the court, exactly, not by the the community. Peasantry. Yeah. yeah, the peasantry, they they came they, to they Bahu Bali with their problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Exactly. And so then they're shouting for him. Tell us what happened. Yep. Yeah. Hmm? Absolutely. Say that again, Jim. Oh, it just when they when when there's they caught wind that there's trouble and they, they all amass at the palace and they, they shout out uh, you know, tell us what happened. Yeah. What is this, you know? I think in subtitles it was like, what status of Bahu Bali or something. Um, <laughs> occasionally the subtitles fell down a little bit and were a little yeah. bit pragmatic, but, uh, but yeah, they, 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 uh, they, they got there, they got down and like, we want, we want to know. So yeah. the public knew the, the community, mm -hmm. the subjects knew their best ruler, yeah. you know, and yeah. and never steered from that, and like, well, and this is it, it, you see this in in the Bible the the idea of the shepherd versus the the you know the uh, like other worthies recognizing the true king. You know what? Like uh, I now now I'm going back to the. Uh, I think it was in the first movie where Shiva shows up and helps save as they're trying to raise that ridiculous statue. Yes. And doesn't he jump on a line and save? And the, you know, the slave, you know, the, the, the slave on the line, they're like, they know who he is. They recognize him immediately. And I think that's at another kind of uh, uh, thing we see. Who recognizes royalty? You know, you one. got the pride, the prideful, the folks wrapped up in court and intrigue. Don't um, and uh, and uh, the 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 pure men and women of the land. You know, un unadulterated by sophistication. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good, honest, hardworking peasant folk <laughs> recognize their betters. And often they would have, you know, they they be kind of sweaty, and there they had a couple mm -hmm. of main people that they there was a, one gentleman uh, with dark complexion and a gray beard, and and he would he would often he had a few speaking a few speaking lines more than Ante, uh, Aventica, but uh, 
Uh, yeah, they would, they would sort of hit these, these, the say, you know, they'd be the, the sort of the face of the crowd essentially. And, uh, yep. and, and you could, you know, read the mood through there, but mm-hmm. yeah. I, and, and you know, the bummer part about Aventica is like, there's a part of me in, in a lot of other films, we do acknowledge maybe on the cutting room floor, maybe there's a great oh, scene, yeah. but in this though, I'm like, what, what they would have done with an extra cut. 15 minutes. What, what? <laughs> What Indian film has ever left anything on the cutting room floor? Um, you know, I, I was thinking. Is that like, even a thing? <laughs> Editing? Well, sure, we put everything in order. Extended That's why we version. have intermission breaks. Um, the, uh, one of the, the aspects to it, too, is that it's, it's and, and I wanted to ask uh, Shashank about if there's echoes in this in current day India, um, uh, echoes in this movie, like there often is, you know, par- parables and, and stuff. They have messages for current day, even though they're set in another time. But I was thinking more particularly, you know, the big sort of fight between uh, the, the daughter-in-law and mother-in-law is that, you know, the mother-in-law is essentially, if you can break it down, I'll just be a devil's advocate saying, She's a member of the 1%. I mean, if you see, you know, all the wealth that she brought to Devasena's kingdom, uh, which was a ridiculous amount of wealth, you think, why does somebody have this much wealth in the first place? Um, And also that she expressed her uh, interest or love or a desire to have Devasena be part of the family in wealth uh, as opposed to actually talking to her. And then, which is what set, one of the things that set Devasena off is that, that you know you're trying to buy me without even having met me and that was sort of like one of the main things but also there's a notion too in this of um the dangers of absolutism like i and and i think you guys touched upon that a little bit or a little bit earlier the promises and you know well i kept my word and that sort of thing but furthermore uh they use this against katapa when they said we'll put that on your tombstone tombstone well kept his word yeah. she kept her word and <laughs> sure <is> death <laughs> reigned from above <laughs> yeah but she was good for it uh the you know they use they used that they used that uh devotion to absolutism uh to katapa when they said you know didn't you promise yourself to the court court didn't your whole family and all your generations promise themselves to and, your the court said, and, and your previous generations add because all your yeah so yeah. go kill bahu <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but really? Uh and and so they that was a weapon that they used against them. Of course, the 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 neat the interesting part of that is that that it worked. That at the end of movie 1, you were like, how can Katapa would Katapa. never uh, Katapa would never uh uh, uh Yeah, you You're right. Yeah. The and, mystery and of the peace. How could that happen? That's unre- that's unrealistic. That would never happen. Yeah. I, and then, you know what? You're absolutely right, Jim. I never even thought of that until now where you're like, I, 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 the second, the first half of the second story is in a way also like it, it even amps up the, the tragic nature of uh-huh. Bahubali's death and not so much for Bahubali. He stays pure all the way through. He's never yeah, corrupted. He's it he has a shitty death, and it sucks, but it drives the movie forward. Uh, it's tragic for Katapa. Katapa. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that the, the him where he's like, and because we had that wonderful view of him, and this beautiful brother or what uncle, uncle, uncle nephew, grandfather. you know that family, that family relationship. You know, that's why it's so, like, so heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when he does his duty. Absolutely, yeah. Duty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to say it. <laughs> I don't care what my great-great-grandfather did. Why the f- am I paying for his promise? Well, he's yeah. a slave, and... Uh, He's left with little choice in the matter. He's like, you, you slit my head off. Uh, I would not do this. But she's like, do you want um, me to go and kill Bahubali instead? And then he's like, oh, shit, I need to do this. So, Oh, yeah, he's totally guilt-tripped. So, so, I mean, 
it is very shakespearean in, in that sense uh, there is a lot of doom like right from the beginning it's, it it is a story of doom if you just had to look at the first mm. one and a half one hour 45 minutes it is a story of doom it's it's a story of a man and a society wrong totally we, we know bahubali's going to die we know who killed bahubali so it amps That's what makes up it the tragic. poignancy of the moment when we have this exactly. beautiful cuz yeah by the end of by as you're getting into it it's um you're like starting to well maybe we we're just lied to Mm. Yeah. I don't do want get him to this? die. I don't want Katapa to do this. Yeah. I want it to work out differently yeah. as you go to the inevitable. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's the, those, those interesting stories when, you know, you know, somebody's going to die. You're like, uh, it, you, there can be one or two, one of two outcomes. One is that they actually die. And that keeps the, the writer hemmed in, you know, that, that sort of, that puts a boundary on the story. Yeah. And yep. then the other one is that they sneak their way out of it, you know, is that they pull <laughs> yeah. some sort of razzle cheat. dazzle and, yeah. and cheat, cheat a little bit. So, um, you know, what I that, never liked about the snap in, uh, oh, the, the infinity war BS and the more. Yeah. It's like, uh, well, that's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You'd the, the lack of stakes. Yeah. Yes. Um, listen guys, uh, want to, I, I, we, we've got, you know, we're, we're doing all right here, but only have 14 minutes left. Sure. Um, uh, even though the film deserves more chat, we <laughs> could almost do a part two. Ouch. Uh, that said, uh, we still got time, you know, the final thoughts and everything. I do want to take this moment though for, uh, of course, uh, <laughs> our Sunday morning, we have one loyal viewer. Uh, oh my goodness. And we got people in the chat. <laughs> Jelly duck, our man in Kuwait. Thanks Jelly guys duck. for, uh, keeping an eye on that. Um, but, uh, we should do yeah, that slow uh, motion Bahubali style. <laughs> Sorry. No, and and with that, you know those looks, <laughs> those awesome. <laughs> God damn, I yeah, we got to raise some money, Jim, to Alb Shashank create a a a a, a, oh. can, a North American uh, uh, Indian you know short film. You know, yeah. some North American movie, but treated with an Indian sensibility. I want to yeah. see that movie. I want to be part of making that movie. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, but anyway, back to. I think they've, I can't recite offhand, but they've sort of tried stuff like that. Uh, you know what? There has been, been a couple of scenes, or parts of movies. Or yeah, little it, a little bit. Uh, either of you guys ever watched The Guild? Was no. one of the first, no, one of the first really no. good started on the, on YouTube web, webisodes, uh, about a group of people who got into playing, uh, it's basically world of Warcraft or, you know, one of those, but they called it something different, um, served by an actress and some of her actor friends, they did a whole episode that turned into a you know, a, a, a Bollywood music video, but with their characters, like it was still the move. It was still a, a, an episode and they were all five to 10 minute episodes, right? Like, uh, it was still the, the thing and it was about playing this game and whatever. Um, yeah, but I, I think there are other, there are, there are North American, let's say our Western movie concepts or constructs <coughs> that to treat it through that lens would just be an interesting way of looking at a, let's say a storyline, a story style that we're sort of used to and is getting tired. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway. All right. Um, let's, uh, but first, before we get back to Bahu Bali, um, I, I do want to, it is time to, uh, for, for our, you know, 
for we do have a few viewers. They're out there uh, to ask them to uh, please slam the like um, if you haven't already. Subscribe, and last but certainly not least, let's ringy ding that bell. Awesome. Um, now, uh, what else? We also, and I'll give the uh, let's give the screen over to uh, Mr. Chaboyko. Let's uh, throw up a bit of. Uh, should get the let's get the chat back. Make a little room for us, Jim. Why don't you tell us what we are going to be watching? Uh, what what are we uh, what are we watching next week? Not Bahu Bali. Uh, uh, and when I too. say we. Uh-huh. Put some backwards. air quotes on that. Yes. Uh, I have uh, a Thanksgiving. It's Canadian Thanksgiving next weekend, uh, as Canadians know. Uh, so we have a long weekend. I'm going to be out in the countryside, so I will miss next week's show. But evidently, the rumor on the street is that uh, the movie covered will be Venom 2. That is correct. Is that the one you saw yesterday? Or that is the one I one? saw yesterday okay. in in anticipation. Uh, we and go. we will be having a, a, a guest uh, host, uh, my friend Catherine, uh, who uh, she came on and helped me look at, um, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, Kate on oh, yes, Netflix. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah it, it was funny, Jim. We... We've been, you know, as as folks who don't know, Jim and I are always kind of playing with our schedule and trying to give you, you can find in the description, like an advanced list, eh? Uh, All the way to the uh, damn near the end of the month. Uh, But um, we kind of had a hard time this night. And for a while, there's like three choices. We finally eliminated one. We're going to do one thing later. We are going to have a double feature, perhaps sometimes sometime in November. Uh, but we also, we still had a couple and I gave Catherine the choice. <laughs> it was really surprised. Oh, well that's easy. Venom. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, really? Well, this ought to be a great show. <laughs> that solves it then. <laughs> Not just solves it, makes it entertaining, you know? Uh, oh, and yeah. we've got a, we've got an hap, uh, sorry guys. Let's get this on the screen. Jelly Duck is wishing us an uh, an early Thanksgiving. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Uh, you, appreciate the, the 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 good wishes, the Thanksgiving good wishes. Of course, uh, we also just here in Canada um, went through our first day of National uh, uh, Truth and Reconciliation with uh, the First Nations of Canada. So the whole idea of Thanksgiving, I suspect, will be different uh, as it should be, perhaps. Um, Although we're not quite as bound up in that American idea of the first Thanksgiving, that's not really a Canadian thing, but um, we certainly have our own uh, interesting past. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, Um, let's get back to the movie at hand. Which is, oh right, Bahu Bali. That's what we're talking about today. <laughs> um, sequels all and, over the place. Prequel, <laughs> sequel. And uh, let's uh, let's do a quick round. Uh, uh, SS Rajamuli. Is he pa- are we giving him a pass or a fail, uh, Jim? Yeah. Yes. Pass. Shashank. Yeah, it's a definite bus. I I couldn't agree it's a more. Definite bus. Absolutely. Do we you know guys, like I this is an interesting let me ask you this. Thinking about the size and scope of these films, and we certainly talk about it on one side about how much directors you know they're going to get notes from the studio, certainly in a, in a Western and a, and a North American, uh, context. Um, but I would imagine it's, it's the same the world over, uh, you know, 
he's still, there's going to be financiers saying, well, we're worried about this or what about that? Do we want to even give extra points for the fact that this still looked like a unified whole? You know, that the folks, the filmmakers, him and his producing and his creative team were able to deliver a film, a consi- a film while being different from Bahubali 1 was still unified. You know what I mean? Like it, it was still of the same world. Universe, the yeah. sensibility is the same. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as I told uh, previously, it felt very authentic and th- it felt part of the Bahubali universe. You know, there is a universe that is completely Bahubali. And I think just the way the sensibilities of both the films are, I think they're quite similar. And you yeah. can clearly see, you know, whenever you watch a film, whether it's Harry, uh, any big franchise, whether it be Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, you know, this is the universe that you're getting into. For, for that matter, any great uh, piece of fiction. So I think even in this film, in both the films, you can clearly sense that this is the Bahubali universe. So even yeah. though it's very different tonally in comparison to the first film, I think that is very much that Bahubali sensibility or that Bahubali universe. I think that that can be clearly felt in the film. As as uh, uh, The Empire Strikes Back was tonally very a little different, different but, from Star Wars. But you can clearly sense it's, it's yeah. part of the Star Wars world. Yeah. What, uh, what do you think, Jim? Yeah, I mean, not uh, probably not an easy thing, but you know, uh, I mean, that's what continuity that folks are there for, I guess. But uh, yeah, oh, I mean, but that like I mean, I'm talking about the bigger, like it doesn't feel like a mush. No, no, not at you all. Know? I, you know, yeah. it, it almost like they are substantially. I mean. It, it's funny because it's it's the same but different, of course. And and I and I, I maybe they were emboldened. The Empire Strikes it, Back. Like, yeah, yeah. Different, but you're yeah. not going. Oh, this is like a whole new movie and a whole yeah. new. You you feel you're like in the same larger story. Yes. Yeah. And I yeah. guess what I'm asking: Do we need to give a director even extra points? Because you get to a certain point where the the project becomes so big. Yeah. You know, you're almost a director is almost just riding a dragon. Yeah. Or, or yeah. perhaps a, a swan. <laughs> That's a ship. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> With the love of his life. Uh, and his uncle is also his slave because that's not weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just part of the job description of doing the sequel, but, you know, it. it no. <sighs> I mean, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I wouldn't say it's necessary. I mean, sure, as as much as no, no, I see what you're saying, yeah. Medium, but I mean, credit, yeah, credit is due that that uh, they they managed to keep the sensibility of the first one and make the story better without yes. changing it, you know, without making it seem like what like nothing really out of yeah. left field uh, you know and, and sure credit should be given for that so, yeah. uh i'm sure there's sequels in the past nothing really comes to mind you know there's bad sequels right there's jaws 3 <laughs> you know for instance <laughs> but that's not really a serious one i don't consider it canonical uh but uh, <laughs> uh as much as jaws has a canon but i could um, say it's like yeah i mean when you're dealing well, with you're giving a, jaws you know, a lot of credit yeah, exactly. Amity Island, but uh, the uh, <laughs> uh, I guess you should give him credit. Yeah. No, no. I, I actually, you've you've convinced me. You're absolutely right. It's it's part of the job description. No one just picks some poor chump off the street, some peasant, and says we're going to drive a quarter of a billion, whatever. Whatever, whatever denomination, make us a movie and project manage this. And there's going to be upwards of a thousand people, different people over the course of this film. Yeah. No one, no one does that. That's not a thing. The people who are doing that, they want to be there. 
They have chosen it, <laughs> you know. Um, all right, guys, uh, we are, mm-hmm. we're coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, we're winding up quickly here. Um, final thoughts. Do you, uh, I think we'll, we'll leave our final, final thoughts for Shashank, but, uh, uh, for myself and then Jim, I'll go to you, Jim, but for myself, I, yeah, I gotta admit, I've, I want to watch it again. I, yeah. there is, I think this will yeah, uh, th- th- this is a twofer. And maybe I'll do, I'll follow my own advice. I'll pick an afternoon and I'll just watch the whole, like, part one, have a nosh, <laughs> then part two. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, I cannot, it, it is a, it is a, it's a great couple of movies, a great time, a great, um, entry into a part of the, it's not Bollywood. It shows, it gives you an idea that there's, India is not Diverse. just Mumbai, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say on that. What about you, Jim? Sure. I'm, I'm, my feed's cutting out a little bit here, but uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead quickly with my thoughts. Um, hey, my favorite part, or my favorite part, one of the funny things is at the start, there's a little thing that gives the, any re, any resemblance to uh, people living or dead is coincidental. <laughs> well, well. Oh, right up front. <laughs> yeah, right up front. And there's, I was like, uh, okay, well, I, there was that one time I spent, hit the spear with another spear but anyway um a couple interesting lyrics the most beautiful woman who will put beauty to shame uh and there, there's one brutal one hail the one wearing skulls as necklaces and that, that's the good guy they're talking about but um uh the flaming cows was new for me that was kind of cool uh as was the word elephantry elephantry uh referring to the elephant troops but uh yeah, there was uh, there was a lot uh, there was a lot here. Uh, I guess we're also we're supposed to say katapa, katapa without emphasizing any of the syllables. Katapa, katapa, yeah, because our inclination is a katapa or katapa or something like that. But katapa, katapa. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, just uh, uh, I I I I, I like the direction that this one took. It was it was a great watch. Also. When when uh, Buddy got hit with all those arrows, and he just he took the sword and he knocked them all off his back. That was a pretty awesome, that was a pretty uh, baller uh, shot there. So, uh, but uh, in any case, yeah, great watch. Uh, you know, and and if anything, I can say, or I can ask rhetorically, does this make you want to watch more Indian films? And for me, the answer is, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you bet. Yeah. yeah. For, for for our audience yeah just go go watch more and Netflix has so much yeah, and a yeah. range it isn't all the big with the music the rock video and the you know sorry Shashank once you uh, yeah. uh yeah I could finish us, this finish us off before we go to our goodbyes and everything absolutely yeah uh, I I agree with you guys. I I couldn't recommend this film enough. Especially, I think it's a major step up over Part One. And even though it's a traditional good versus evil tale, there's just so much of pathos and tragedy and deep themes about following your duty or and the conflicts between following your own duty or doing what is right. Uh, so overall, you know, if I have to put this in perspective, I would just reiterate what I said in the beginning. It is. It is Lion King meets the Indian movie sensibilities and uh, done pretty well, done pretty well for the most yeah. part. Oh. And uh, both these films completely changed the face of Indian cinema like forever. Uh, there, as I told in the previous stream, this is probably um, our Star Wars. Um, and generally, most of the cinema that we consume on a major scale before this was Bollywood. But because this is a regional film and it became so successful, a um, lot of people from India actually started watching films which are not of our own languages, which are not Hindi. So it, just in terms of the kind of impact it made, it would be equivalent to what Star Wars and Parasite did. Mm-hmm. I, I like the way you put that. Um, there is, there's, it's not just good and evil. There are deeper themes going on here. It is um, 
more, there's more going on. Oh, help me. Uh, we got somebody new in the chat quickly as we're wrapping up here. Uh, Suda, Suda. Yeah. yeah Suda. Okay. Yeah. Suda, Suda Venkatachari. Ven- yeah. It's pretty good. That's oh, okay. <laughs> oh, right on. <laughs> uh, says enjoyed the review. Um, welcome to, uh, welcome to Jim and Rob over analyze movies with our special guest, Shashank Vachari. Um, I can't remember where it was. I was agreeing with you though. There, there is, there's more going on in this movie than just, well, we got a bad guy and a good guy. It's, I, you cannot get as wrapped up as, as I did, as it seems Jim did, you know, if there wasn't more that it wasn't saying more, you know, about people, about the human condition. Um, yeah. Beautiful little film. Uh, on that note, uh, yeah, I think it's time. Uh, uh, Shashank, if you can hang out in the green room with us for a bit gotcha. after the show, but I do think it is time to, uh, say our goodbyes on this special morning edition. Um, uh, first of all, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Ahmed Jelly Duck 100. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming in. Definitely a smaller, intimate chat. Uh, uh, Suda, thank you very much for, for popping in and saying hello. Yes. And we're glad you enjoyed the, the conversation and the review. Um, uh, but last, certainly not least, let us talk, uh, let's talk about our good friend Shashank here for a second. Uh, Shashank. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I know there was, you know, um, well, it's hard when you're 10 and a half hour time difference, but uh, really glad we were able to nail it down a time with you. So sorry, we kind of, you know, changed our minds earlier in September. It was, uh, it's a long story, um, yeah, but nice. uh, glad we were able to make this up. Got to do it more often. Uh, yeah. Where... Uh, I know you're busy in school now, um, yeah. but where can people, where, where should people look for you online? You've got your own YouTube channel under Shashank Vachari, but, um, what about, uh, like, uh, you know, Twitter? Oh, that's yeah. not, oh, you got that weird long number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, I made this when I was. Six years ago, like this is a six year old oh. Twitter account. <laughs> I think it would be better to subscribe to my YouTube channel, not follow my social media. I didn't gotcha. really post, uh, tweet much there. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Well, with that in mind, I will make sure that Shashank, a link to Shashank's YouTube channel uh, yep. uh, is in the description and I'll pin it in the top comment. Um, uh, well worth yep. watching your stuff. And Shashank, thanks again for for joining us jim what were you gonna say yeah no no thanks uh equal equal for me thank you so much it was uh it was great to connect again it was great yeah absolutely right okay everybody uh once again thank you all very much um guys i'm gonna send you into the green room uh next uh yes happy thanksgiving um next week just so you know we will be back to our regular time 9 30 p.m central daylight time coordinated universal time um uh, minus five and yeah so uh oh geez my even my glasses are crooked oh well uh is what it is uh i think that's about it uh i suppose it's time Let's uh let's cue the outro. <laughs>